The structure that has been set up here is an asymmetric directional waveguide coupler where light will be injected from the curved waveguide at the top left. Some power will be coupled from the curved waveguide into the straight bus waveguide by evanescent coupling across the gap between the two waveguides. A power monitor has been set up at the drop port of the straight waveguide on the bottom right in order to measure the transmission spectrum through the drop port. Add a mode source from the Sources drop-down menu. Edit the source and under the General tab, set the injection axis to x-axis and the injection direction to forward. Keep the mode selection as fundamental mode, but before we ca calculate the desired mode to inject, the geometry of the source region needs to be set. Select the multi-frequency mode calculation option. This option should be used whenever injecting a broadband mode source. This will calculate the supported mode profile over the broadband range rather than just at the center frequency of the range. Since we want to inject the mode of the curved waveguide at the input, select the bent waveguide option and specify the bending radius as 6 microns to match the radius of curvature of the waveguide. Set the bend orientation to 0. For more details about how to choose the bend orientation angle, based on the propagation direction of the source and the bending direction of the structure, see the Bent Waveguide Solver page linked below. Next, under the Geometry tab, set the X position of the waveguide to minus 3.068 microns. Set the Y position to 1.536 microns. And set the Z position to 0.11 micron. It's important to make sure that the source is centered with the center of the waveguide when using the bent waveguide option, since the bending radius is measured from the center of the source region. Set the Y span to 2.5 micron and the Z span to 2 micron. The values for the position of the waveguide have been pre-calculated based on the geometry of the structure so that the position of the source is centered with the center of the waveguide. Now that the geometry is set, go back to the General tab and set the Theta Rotation Angle to minus 28.3576 degrees. Again, this rotation angle has been calculated to match the angle of the waveguide at the given location of the source. Now plot the calculated fundamental mode using the Visualize Data button. Here we can confirm that the size of the source region is large enough so that the fields are not being truncated at the edges of the source. We can also choose to plot the field profile of different components of the E and H fields from the visualizer to confirm the polarization of the mode. To get more information about the calculated effective index, loss, and polarization fraction, change the mode selection to user select then click on the Select Mode button, and click OK to select a new mode. Calculate the modes. The fundamental mode is the top one in the mode list, and I can see the details about the effective index, loss, and polarization from here. You can also hover the mouse cursor over the polarization fraction or waveguide TETM fraction columns for a description of the meaning of these values. Now click Cancel and change the mode selection back to Fundamental Mode, then click OK to accept the settings. In the XY view, the angled white line indicates the rotation angle of the source. The thicker white line along the Y direction indicates the source injection plane. With the source selected, the effective index and modal fields of the selected mode can be visualized from the Result View window. Click Run. And after the simulation finishes, you can right-click on the monitor and visualize the T result to view the transmission spectrum through the drop port of the device. Here are some more tips for setting up a mode source. Ensure that the source span is wide enough to completely contain the mode of the structure. You can visually check this by plotting the field profile and making sure that the field amplitude of the mode decays to zero around the edges of the source. But another way you can test this is by doing convergence testing by changing the span of the source. Start by calculating the mode, then increasing the span of the mode source and recalculating the mode. 
Then compare the calculated effective index of the mode between the two different source bands. If the mode source region is wide enough to contain the full mode, the calculated effective index should stay the same when you further increase the source band.